Let's start with holy water. In omne patris et pili et pilitus sancti. Amen. Pater noster, alper omega. God the Father, the Most High, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, God of Holy Ghost of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. All the archangels, Saint Michael, Saint Sophia, Saint Samuel, Saint Gabriel, Saint Raphael, Saint Uriel, Saint Zedekiel, and all our guardian angels. Hail Kahatu Domini, Hail Kahatu Domini, Hail Kahatu Domini, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee, and all the saints in heaven. Grant me, O Lord, the power to my hands for wiping of all stain, so that without defilement of my mind and body, that I might serve thee. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen. Blessed be the Lord, my rock, who trained my hands for war, and my fingers for battle. My mercy, my sacred, my fortress, my stronghold, my deliverer, my shield, in which I take refuge, who subdue people under me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen. Pater Noster, qui es in ceri sanctificet et in nomen tuum, ad benia regnum tuum, fiat voluntas tua, sicut in cielo et in terra. Pater Nostrum quotidianum, dat nobis odie, et dimite nobis dimite nostra, sicut in nos dimitimus territoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentationem, sed libera nos a malo. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, Benedicta tu mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tu Iesus. Santa Maria, Mother Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nun en hora multis nostre. Amen. Gloria Patri et Filio et Spiritus Santo, sicuter et principio, et nun es semper, et in secula seculorum. Amen. In nomine Patris, et Pili, et Piritus Sancti. Amen. Abba, Sator, our Father, the Almighty, who created heaven and earth. Abba, Sator. centered on our blessed Lord and the salvation of souls. Again, the kind of priests we need. So here's a brief answer to give you an idea of his personal story before everything fell apart for him. Quote, Born in Perth, Father Rowe shared that his discovery of Christ came about partly through his upbringing. Both my parents passed away when I was a baby, so I was brought up by my grandmother, he explained. This led to a lot of thinking about my place in the world why we're here in the world, and the meaning of life. It was in the silence of just going to Mass on my own that I realized there was someone who cared for me and loved me. The things that happen to us affect us in life, and often in those sad things, that's where we find God, he said. As a young man, Father Rowe had won a scholarship in metallurgy, an art and science of metallic elements, but discerned that he was being called in a different direction. I decided it wasn't for me and kept thinking that there's so much more to life than material things and the things of this world. So it was that focus on the next world and the spiritual realm that led me down this path. Because St. Charles Seminary was closed at the time, Father Rowe spent seven years in Adelaide at Rose Trevor's St. Francis Xavier Seminary before returning to Perth to be ordained to the priesthood by then Archbishop of Perth Barry Hickey on May 21st, 1994 on a vigil of Pentecost. 25 years later, Father Rowe said there have been many highlights which have stood out for him. I would say encountering Christ in the sacraments and helping people along in the sacraments and walking together with him have been highlights, whether baptisms, weddings, or funerals, he said. The priest is often involved in both the happy and the sad times, so there are always lots of occasions to remember over the years. Those events have stood out for me over my time in the priesthood, and 
kind of lengthy quote. See, Father Rowe has dedicated himself to the traditional Mass and to the traditional form of the sacraments. And it is that reason that he is being canceled by, or he was initially canceled, the first time he was canceled, by his bishop. You see, he did not particularly care for Traditionus Custodis and the rather dubious logic behind that document. Give me a second here. I'm having a minor little technical issue on my end, so I'm just going to take care of it while we queue up the article here about what happened. You see, what happened in the past was that Father Rowe was, like a lot of traditional priests, subject to an unjust decree from Rome about the traditional sacraments. And this got published, his resistance to this, because he chose to resist, made the national news in Australia, and then from there, his battle with the diocese for not complying made international news. That's how we found out about it here. And all of this is to give you an update, to lead to the update on what happened to him. So the headline here is from, from what the Western the West Australian is, Church of St. Anne Belmont priest, Father Michael Rowe, sacked by Archbishop Tim Costello over his Latin mass. See, things came to a head when Traditionus Custodius was issued. There were so many priests canceled, we couldn't cover all of them here. A lot of bishops tried to resist. They tried invoking canon law to resist. Others just quietly pretended it didn't happen. And that the Vatican came down with the wrath of God on them. And in this article, we're going to see a really nasty accusation leveled against the priest. And I will, they essentially claimed he tried to steal from his own parish. Now, at the time, Father Rowe said, and I reported on it at the time, that the only things he took from the parish when he left that parish to go start offering masses in the traditional form independently of the diocese, the only things he took were his personal belongings, including things that he purchased that were mass implements that he purchased with his own money. And they tried to smear him because there's been an ongoing effort for any priest to resist the evil dictates from Rome to turn them into essentially pariahs, to push them to the margins of the church's society. And keep all this in mind as you hear uh, this little context from this secular Australian outlet, because Catholicism isn't exactly the most popular thing in Australia among with the authorities. But look what happened to Carl Hunkfowl, to the great lengths the state went to, before finally their highest court said, you know, this whole case stinks, it's obviously fake, and they dismissed the charges against him, after he'd already been in jail for a crime he did not commit. From the article, quote, A priest who defied the Catholic Archbishop Tim Costello by practicing the Latin Mass has been sacked, had his bank accounts frozen, and is being investigated for concerns he stole from his own church. Father Michael Rowe was removed as rector of the Church of St. Anne shortly before Christmas. His sacking, which came after he refused to obey an order about how the how Mass was delivered, resulted in a screaming argument between rival parishioners on the steps of the Belmont Church. The veteran priest had built a big congregation of West Australians who enjoyed, enjoyed the tradition of the Latin Mass, which is being phased out by papal decree. Priests who wish to deliver the Mass in Latin, uh, we'll put an asterisk here, people who are not Catholic, do not know, in fact, sadly, a lot of Catholics don't know, that there are massive differences between the traditional Mass and the Novus Ordo being said in Latin. Clearly, they think this is just a matter of the language, when the Novus Ordo and the traditional Latin Mass are extremely different in not just the language, but also in the form of the Mass. Check out the New Liturgical Movement website if you want uh, to go dive, dive down that rabbit hole, but it's something people should know the difference of. Anyway, so... They describe it as an ancient style most recently endorsed in 1962 and that you need special permission to offer it. And then quoting the bishop, your failure to seek authorization to celebrate the Mass using the Roman Missal 1962 at the Church of St. Anne Belmont is a violation of the obligation you freely undertook when you were ordained a deacon, Archbishop Costello said in a letter dated December 11th. I have determined that your appointments, in light of the Holy Father's word appropriate, are no longer appropriate. Therefore, I hereby formally advise you that your appointment as the rector of the Church of St. Anne Belmont and as a spiritual leader of the community that gathers there to celebrate the Mass using the Roman Missal, 
promulgated by St. John the 23rd in 1962 are hereby revoked with immediate effect. In a letter sent to the parishioners, Father Rowe accused the Archdiocese of freezing his parish's bank accounts. All access to the Catholic Development Fund bank accounts for the community and music accounts have been cut off for me to access in the normal manner, he wrote. End quote. Hence why he went independent. It's not that hard to figure out what happened here. Right? That's his reasoning. And, well, and uh, I, he issued a full letter also. Um, I read the full letter a few months ago, and I'm not going to do that here again. I just want you to hear his case he's making here before I go to the uh, update. So, because his letter is really long, it's like seven pages in length. But I'm going to skip down to near the end, where he talks about traditionis custodis, because the new religion cannot handle the uh, pre-conciliar forms of the sacraments or anything, because if they're trying to replace Catholicism, you can't have Catholicism still existing within the structure of the ape of the church. So you have to get rid of all the, the, uh, the trappings of Catholicism, and including its worship, which is not a trapping in the slightest. But remember, the law of what we, the law of we have, how we worship is the law of what we believe. Okay? And they are instituting new forms of the Mass as we speak. We've talked about that extensively in recent days, including they're now high and enculturated Mass for whatever reason. But here is the impact of traditionalist custodis and why he's resisting. He says, quote, during the protracted legal battle, Traditionus Custodis was released. Although all the matter was before the civil courts, the Archbishop was not quick to seek to enforce it. Once the legal battle was over, and the decisive victory was the Archbishop's, he then sought to enact a decree implementing the motu proprio. A copy of that decree can be found on the Archdiocese of Perth's website, and is referred to in the Archbishop's recent open letter to the people who worship at St. Anne's. The decree was heavily restrictive and required all priests to apply for permission to say the Latin Mass pursuant to Article 5 of Traditions Custodis. Conditional to such approval being considered, not even necessarily granted, but merely considered by the Archbishop, I was provided a document typed up by the Archbishop's delegate. Monsignor Michael Keating required me to sign a declaration attesting to the following. Here's your loyalty oath that he had to, say, that he had to, that he had to actually adhere to. One. That, quote, I do not deny the validity and the legitimacy of the liturgical reform dictated by Vatican Council II and the Magisterium of the Supreme Pontiffs. Now, Vatican II didn't actually call for a liturgical reform. It didn't call for a new mass. It, it didn't. Go read the documents. Two, that I accept the legitimacy of the concelebration of the Eucharist that appropriately expresses the unity of the priesthood of the sacrifice and also of the whole people of God. By the way, I found where the phrase people of God comes from, and when you hear it, you will never want to use it again. Spoiler for a future video comes from actual condemned heretics. It, it does. Future video, though. Three. Did I acknowledge that the liturgical books promulgated by St. Paul VI and St. John Paul II in conformity with the decrees of Vatican Council II are the unique expression of Alexa Rondi, the Roman Rite, meaning the, uh, the, the traditional mass of 16... 18 centuries it is no longer valid, essentially. Four, that I acknowledge the identity and unitary expression in the Roman race found in all the liturgical books promulgated by the authority of the Supreme Pontiff. Five, that I shall maintain the observance of all the laws in the Code of Canon Law regulating the sacred liturgy, and in particular the laws promulgated by Pope Francis in his motu proprio. Six, that having been granted the authorization to celebrate Mass using the Roman Missal approved in 1962 by Pope John XXIII, I shall use this Missal to the exclusion of any other Missal proof for use prior to the year 1962. That means that he cannot do the pre-1955 Holy Week. That's what that means. For those who don't know, the same people who gave us the new Mass in 1954 sat down with, uh, John, or with Pope Pius XII with his authority and changed completely the Holy Week liturgy, completely changed it. And uh, that's considered one of the great tragedies of liturgical history that opened the door completely for the liturgical innovations and revolution that happened after Vatican II. Again, read the documents of Vatican II. They do not call for a new Mass. They call for essentially offering the traditional Latin Mass with the Our Father and maybe the Creed in the vernacular. And they reach the chanting of the of the readings in the vernacular, and that's about it. That's what they call for. If that had happened, if that's the reform we got, there would probably not be a traditionalist movement today. Full stop. Because that's how it happened. But here's 
what he says. And finally, he says, I have serious problems with some of the above propositions which simply contain factual errors or attempt to assert things that they simply do not believe are true. I cannot even caution any such a document with the above propositions because I do not believe they reflect the truth of Catholic doctrine and dogma as passed down in the church throughout history. Just because the Holy Father and the Archbishop of Perth believe these statements to be true does not necessarily of itself make them true. Such statements have to be carefully considered in the light of continuity of Catholic tradition. Rather than reflecting the truth of Catholic doctrine and dogma as passed down in the church throughout history, my concern with these statements is that they represent a rupturing from such truth and tradition. And quote. Again, permanent continuity went out the window with Francis. It did. He didn't even admit it as much. Now, he, after this letter, he would go on to offer the Mass at a local independent chapel. And that was basically the story for all 2024. We didn't hear anything else after that. Until this suddenly hit the news in late September, and then just a couple of days ago again. See, in late September, the diocese issued a statement that was a veiled snub at the Mount Independent Priest, saying that all Masses are public and issuing norms that he, he could not follow in good conscience. Okay, so this was again them attempting to double down on the logic of traditionus custodis. And so the priest issued a response to that. And I'll give you the response what the, the statement the bishop said, but in something I'll give to you here in a moment that was after this, the bishop said, he has a link to his original statement that's not there. You, you go there and it just takes you to the front page of the Diocese of Perth's website, which is unfortunate. And if the bishop would actually post it publicly where it's easy to see and easy to find, I would bring that to you because his statement also is important and should be here on the record. But here is Father Rowe's response as posted by the YouTube channel TLN Perth. Statement response to Archbishop's statement dated 20th September. I have made, been made aware that the Archbishop Costello put out a statement dated 20th September titled Clarification Regarding Matters Concerning the Public Celebration of the Liturgy in the Archdiocese of Perth. The statement was made available to all the faithful at St. Anne's Church of Belmont, where I was formerly rector, on Sunday, September 22, 2024. And it was sent by email to all clergy of the Archdiocese of Perth on Monday, the 23rd of September. I note that this statement simply notes a series of purported facts that the Archdiocese alleges about me. It is clear from that statement that all that was being expressed is the Archdiocese version of events and opinion about recent matters. The problem with the Archbishop's statement is that it is littered with factual inaccuracies. It contains errors of fact, and from those errors it appears to lead the reader to draw erroneous conclusions about myself and those who choose to come to Mass at what the Archbishop describes as the Latvian Center in Belmont. I know that I've always maintained and emphasized often that the Masses I offer at the Latvian Center are private Masses, not public Masses. I have at no stage advertises, advertised these Masses broadly. And the first person to advertise the existence of these Masses broadly and publicize them and their location is Archbishop Costello in his statement dated 20th September 2024. Despite the heading of the Archbishop's statement referring to public celebration of the liturgy, I repeat that these are private Masses on private property. Not in a church, public church, chapel, or oratory, the Archdiocese of Perth. But I have never advertised to the public. They are by specific invitation only. Archbishop Costello's statement not only contains factual errors, but it is a slanderous act of defamation of my good name and good reputation. Despite the Archbishop's statement, it is important to note that I remain a priest in canonical good standing within the Archdiocese of Perth. The Archdiocese recently confirmed this in writing to me, and I have the same faculties in place that every other priest of good standing in the Archdiocese of Perth currently enjoys. The Archbishop's statement does not contradict or change that position. Anyone who has any concerns about the Archbishop's statement is welcome to make a time to come and see me and discuss these concerns with me. Signed, Father Michael Rowe. Well, as you might imagine, that changed immediately. The Bishop did not particularly like such a statement, and so he published this on the Perth Catholic website, dated Sunday, October 13th, this past Sunday of this year. Again, and they keep referring to the Latvian Center, and you're going to see what part of this is. And so this is where I'm going to have to define for you what the SSPX resistance are. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Padero was cancelled and there is a bad bishop or archbishop in Australia. This is news 
and bless Father Ro. He did the right thing. In the name of Patri, and Pili, and Spiritus Sancti. Amen. The Holy Bible, Revised Standard Version, Second Catholic Edition, Ignatius Press. Gospel of Mark, Chapter 9. Verse 38, Jesus said to him, Teacher, we saw a man casting out demons in your name, and we forbade him, because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not forbid him, for no one who does a mighty work in my name will be able soon after to speak evil of me, for he that is not against us is for us. For truly I say to you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose his reward. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 9, verse 49. John answered, Master, we saw a man casting out demons in your name, and we forbade him because he does not follow with us. But Jesus said to him, Do not forbid him, for he that is not against you is for you. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In nomine Patris, et Pili, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Four symbol of the Holy Ghost. Dove, fire, water, candlestick lamp. We have the three candles representing the Holy Trinity. The Holy Ghost is here, the Holy Ghost is here, the Holy Ghost is here. We have the Sacred Heart of Jesus and the Immaculate Heart of Mary and the Blessed Candle. Unum Sanctum Catholicum et Apostolicum Iglesium. 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 Unum Sanctum Catholicum et Apostolicum Iglesia. Unum Sanctum Catholicum et Apostolicum Iglesia. Unum Sanctum Catholicum et Apostolicum Iglesia. One Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. Biba Bigelow, Biba Archbishop of Hell. Long live Bigelow. Attend Latin Mass. The reason Father Rowe was cancelled because of celebrating the traditional Latin Mass. Bad Bishop, bad Archbishop, bad Cardinals, bad Pope, you will pay for this. God is not sleeping for you. He's watching you. Please, you need to repent. Okay. Angel, good morning, Angel. Bye-bye now, Angel. Bye-bye. Okay. We'll go to Latin Mass. We're going to see Father Ilo. Okay. Bye-bye. Smile, angel. Show your teeth, angel. Show your teeth. Okay. Bye-bye now. We love them. Bye-bye.